Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and in this video I'm going to explain how to create user-defined functions or UDFs in Excel. So UDFs allow us to write macros basically to create a function in Excel. And what I mean by that is for example here in this cell I have this formula to calculate the fiscal year. Uh, starting in October we have our fiscal year calculation. This is one way to do it. There's many ways to calculate fiscal year. However, Excel does not have a fiscal year function built in. So we have to write a more complex formula to do this calculation. But with that said, we can create a UDF in VBA for uh, fiscal year calculation. And that's exactly what I have right here. So in this case, we have this fiscal year function. We're just feeding in the date, and then it's going to do the same calculation and return the fiscal year. So let's jump into the VB editor and see how this works. Developer tab, visual basic button, keyboard shortcut, alt F11. And here within this code module, I have this function uh, for the fiscal year. And as you can see within this, we have a very similar formula that's going to go ahead and calculate the fiscal year. And then it returns the result to this fiscal year variable, which outputs that back into the cell, the result in the cell. So let's go ahead and rewrite this function and I'll explain exactly how it works. I also have a little syntax guide down here that explains the function statement and the components of it. But let's go ahead and rewrite this. So right down here, the first thing we're going to do is start with the word function and we're going to type a space and next we have the function name. So we can give this any name, it just can't be a name of an existing function within Excel. Uh, and it can also not be a name of a function we're already using. So I'll just retype this we'll say uh, yr instead. Then we're going to open the parentheses. And this is where we can specify the arguments. Now we can specify multiple arguments. In this first example, we'll just use one argument for the function. And we'll call that ddate and say as. And then the data type will use a variant. because so we're going to pass through. Uh, in this case, we might pass through a date. We might pass through text accidentally. We want to handle that. Uh, so we'll use a variant here. Close the parentheses. And then we're going to say as and then specify the return data type. So the data type that's going to be returned back to the cell. And in this case, we want a number. So we're going to use long integer uh, data type. And so after we have that, we'll just hit enter. We'll automatically get the end function line added down here. And we can add our code for the function between that. So I'll hit enter here a few times and we'll add our function code. Now the function operates very similar to a macro. It can have multiple lines of code. For this first example, we'll just have one line of code, but I will show some more advanced examples. So here, I'm just going to uh, copy this part of our formula. So we don't have to retype all of that. I will explain this. So first just copy that. And what we're going to do down here in the function is type the uh, name of the function here. So we'll just type this, or of course you can copy and paste as well. I'll type fiscal here, there we go. And we're gonna set that equals to, and then I'll just paste our formula. Now, as you can see within the formula, we are using the variable that's being passed through from the function. So within the cell, we're going to reference uh, a cell here or even have a string of text or something like that that will pass through to the function. And that's what happens here. And then we can reuse that value within our code like we're doing down here and process it and calculate it and then we'll output that to the function name. So we'll always need to set the function name equal to something somewhere within the function or the procedure code. So now that we have this basic function set up, let's jump back over to Excel and test it out. So we'll do that right here in this column. I'm going to type equals and then start typing the word fiscal. And you can see here that I have those function names listed here in the dropdown. So these function names, these custom functions or UDFs do appear in the dropdown here. So of course we can arrow down, we'll tab into fiscal year, and then we're going to select our argument, uh, which will be the date. So we'll just select cell E2 right here, close the parentheses and hit enter. And of course that will calculate, since I'm using an Excel table, we'll add a new column to our table and fill the formula down. So let's take a look at a few more advanced options and features of UDFs. Jump back into the VB editor here, Alt F11. And over here in module two, I have a few more examples. This first one here, fiscal year two, contains some error handling in case we pass through something that is not a date. So we're checking the date using this isDate function. I've also set up a uh, kind of a temporary variable here that's a variant. 
And so if it is a date, if D-date is a date, then we'll go ahead and do the calculation there for the fiscal year. If not, we're going to return this text back to the function. So we're actually returning it first to this temporary variable or this variable here. And then at the very end of the function, we set the function name equal to something. So in this case, the other variable that we're using here within the function. So the point that I really wanted to make here is that you can have multiple lines of code doing a lot of processing of the calculation itself. Then at the very end of the function, you'll wanna repeat the function name and set that equal to the result. This next example down here, fiscal year three, this has multiple arguments. So you can see we're passing the date through. We're also passing the start month through. So in this case, when you go write the formula in Excel, you'll have multiple arguments separated with a comma. You can specify the start month. And then we're also reusing that variable here in the calculation. So up here, we had a hard coded 10 to always start in the month of October. But here we can change that uh, within the function arguments and then use that or reuse that variable within the calculation. And then finally, we can also create optional arguments with the optional keyword, which I did here. So now it's the same a basic function, but this start month variable, I'm sorry, the start month argument is optional and does not need to be specified. And then we also have code here. If it's not specified, uh, it'll be a zero set to a zero, and then we can uh, set up or change that variable's value if that's the case. Now, one other thing you might have noticed here is I have the word private in front of the function names, and this will just exclude it from the dropdown list of our function names back in Excel. So when I typed equals fiscal earlier, you didn't see any of these function names here, and that's because they're private. If we just remove the word private, oops, let me just remove the word private, just delete it there, and then we jump back over to Excel, now in any cell here, we'll type equals and start typing fiscal. We'll now see fiscal year four, this function here as well, because it's no longer private, it's a public function. And I should mention that if you do set them to private, the user can still use these functions, they will still calculate, they will just not see them in the dropdown list here. I also wanted to share one quick tip for debugging your functions. I'll hit escape here and then we'll jump back into the VB editor jump back over to module one, and that is that you can add a breakpoint by just uh, clicking in the gutter right here to the function. And this of course will stop or pause the function when it calculates. So for our fiscal year function here, we could jump back over to Excel, and we have that uh, right here in this cell. I'll just hit F2 to edit this cell and then hit enter. And of course, when I do that, the function will calculate, it'll stop or pause, and we can start stepping through the code. So now if I hit F8 on the keyboard, I can step through each line. Now this uh, function only has one line of code, but here, if we hover over the date uh, variable, we can see the date that's being passed through there or the arguments value that's being passed through and we can step through this and debug and evaluate this function. And then of course you can uh, click the breakpoint again to remove it, hit F5 to continue running the function, and that will continue calculating the formula. Next, I'll quickly talk about errors and formula errors. I won't go into this in too much detail, but if we jump back over here to Excel, uh, in this case, if we edit this formula here, and instead of referencing E2, let's reference a uh, cell that contains text like this one, I'll now hit enter. As we can see, we're getting this pound value error. And this happens when the function hits an error. So when an error is raised, I'll jump back over to VBA here. Uh, down here in this line, we'd hit an error because we're passing through text or a string to the month function and the year function. That's not going to work. So typically, if you were to run this code, you have an error raised in VBA in the VB editor. However, uh, with UDFs in cells, it's not going to raise that error and show it to the user, but it is going to return this error back to the formula result. Now, there are a lot of different ways to handle these errors. It's probably a topic for a separate video training altogether. However, uh, in module two, I did show one possible solution here with fiscal year two. Uh, again, this checks if it is a date that's being passed through. If not, it's going to return this text to the cell, and that'll at least let the user know that they didn't specify a date for the argument, and then they can go fix the formula. Okay, so now let's look at some pros and cons of UDFs. We'll go ahead and start with the pros. 
And the first one is, is that we can use these to simplify complex formulas. So if your company, for example, is on a fiscal calendar, you might be copying this formula everywhere in different files, different workbooks and worksheets. And then of course you have to modify it and change the references and everything like that. And with other uh, fiscal year, month, quarter calculations, those calculations can be even more complex. So the UDF uh, functions can definitely simplify that. Here we can just use this function, reference the date, and we'll get the correct result. Another pro is that the UDFs can easily be copied to other workbooks. The code can be copied or imported into other workbooks. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the cons section because it does have some disadvantages as well. Uh, another pro is that we can do some more advanced error handling with the functions. So like we saw in that example, we could return something here if the user doesn't specify a date in the argument, we can return text that's a little more descriptive than the built-in error handling within Excel or those errors that are returned within Excel. And then another pro is that the function can be used um, and called from other macros. So we're not just limited to returning the results of the function to a cell within Excel. We can also write other macros within our projects and call these functions and then return the results to those macros. So the output can be in different places. It is not limited to a cell uh, or a formula within Excel. So now let's talk about some of the cons or disadvantages. And one of the major ones is that the code, the function code, must be saved in the workbook that it is used in. This is not absolutely necessary, but most of the time you'll need to save this code. So if we jump back to the VB editor, this code is here, is, is in this module, this code module within this workbook, and that's where we're going to use the UDF. So if you wanted to use the function in another workbook, you'll need to copy the code into that workbook and save it as a macro enabled file, especially if you're sending this file to other users. And I do have a video that explains how to copy or import code into other workbooks. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. Now, with that said, you can store these functions in your personal macro workbook or in an add-in. I actually have it in my personal macro workbook here in this functions module. I believe it's down here at the bottom. I've I copied in this fiscal year function. When I do that though, and if I do this in, or I go back to Excel to write this formula, I'll need to reference uh, the name of the workbook. So personal.xlsb, then we have the exclamation mark, then the function name, fiscal year, and then we'll open the parentheses, reference the date there, close the parentheses and hit enter. That will calculate, but as you can see here, we have a, quite a long reference here just to get our function name. So it's not as easy to call these if they're stored in your personal macro workbook, or if this is an add-in file, then you have the, need to have the name of the add-in here as well. So the advantage with this is that you can use this on any open workbook because the code's not stored in this workbook, it's stored in my personal macro workbook instead. The disadvantage is that you can't send this file to other users and expect this function to work. They'd either have to have the same exact function stored in their personal macro workbook, or they'd have to have the same add-in installed to call the function within any open workbook that they have. So again, if you are distributing the workbook to other users, the ideal solution or setup is to store the code within this workbook here, make it a .xlsm macro enabled workbook, and then send that workbook to your other users. And then the final disadvantage is that we do not get the screen tip with the arguments. So what I mean by that is, again, I'll just start typing the formula here, uh, fiscal year, when we tab into that, we're not going to see the screen tip here with the arguments like we would with normal built-in functions in Excel. If we were just uh, exit out of that, maybe we say equals and do something like VLOOKUP and tab into that, we get this screen tip here that tells us what we need to specify within the function. So we don't get that with UDFs. There are some ways around that. And again, not, maybe I'll do a, another video that explains those, but we just don't get this nice screen tip here to let the user know what they need to specify within the UDF. So that's an overview of writing UDFs within Excel. Uh, they are a great tool, useful tool for simplifying formulas. And they do have a lot of advantages as well. It's just good to know the pros and cons before you go implement this in any of your projects. So if you have any questions or additional suggestions about using UDFs, please leave a comment below.
If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you are watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.